Could it be that we can only really see truth and beauty, see what we love? Astronauts loving outer space, engineers and architects loving bridges, oceanographers loving great whites, and photographers loving the whole world with all of its sights and sounds. Is love this capacity to do all of the mystery of empathizing and engaging other, is that what really makes us see? Gives us the heart to look more deeply into something, or the patience to wait for beauty to present herself, or the passion to get at the essence, the core of what that thing, that particular part of creation is. So this morning, we're going to continue our series on photography. And our focus today is on pictures of people, portraits, both informal and formal portraiture, pictures of fellow human beings. This is Winston Churchill shot by Yusuf Karsh, famous photograph, because in order to get the scowl, just before he snapped the shot, Karsh went up to Churchill and pulled a cigar out of his mouth, and we got that famous, infamous, iconic photo. This is uh, Ezra Pound, as photographed by Richard Avedon, the great poet. These are This photo is entitled, Workers, Women and Men in India in 1989, shot by photojournalist Sebastio Salgado. This is a picture entitled, The Tailor's Apprentice, shot in 1953 by a photographer named Paul Strand. And this last one is called Man in White Boo-Boo with Daughter. I wonder how they came up with that title. 1950 to 60 by the Malian African photographer Seydou Keita. When famous photographer Robert Kappa was asked how he got his subjects to look so natural so often in the pictures he took, He said that he had to like people and let them know it. 20th century photographer Edward Sheriff Curtis loved his home and Native American land so much that he wanted to preserve and capture its dignity, its former dignity, before that dignity totally disappeared. This is a picture of the medicine man, Slow Bull, 1907. And this next one is a picture of Black Eagle, Assiniboine, 1908. And you just see how he did it, didn't he, that photographer? He caught the dignity of this bygone era, of this bygone chief. In a book on Yusuf Karsh, I read, the impulse in behind much of Karsh's work, one writer has said, is, a sense, is in a sense philosophical and stems from a belief in the dignity, goodness, and genius of human beings. That's what drove him to capture what he captured in all of his famous portraits. Hagar, from a story in the Bible, says... You are the God who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. And Hagar had just been estranged as a slave girl from her master, Sarah, because in bearing her master's husband's child for Sarah, she got kind of psychologically alienated from Sarah. And so Sarah sent her away, and she was being sent out in the desert to fend for herself or die but God saw her and met her in her angst and promised her a huge family and a great nation coming from her life and told her to go back to her master, Sarah. You are the God who sees me, for she said, 
I've now seen the one who sees me. God sees us. Like right now, God sees you. And like Yusuf Karsh, he's fully aware of your inherent dignity and the great beauty that makes up your humanity and knows that he made you just a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned you with glory and honor. Like the best photographers, the best portraiture photographers, he knows your being. He gets your essence, who you are. Old Testament poet wrote, O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. O Lord. Out of this immense, mysterious, otherworldly sense of love, God sees you and knows you. He sees his subjects, the the ones that he pictures and brings to mind perfectly, truthfully, and he's captured you in his mind's eye. He knows what your picture, our picture, looks like. 